Charcot osteoarthropathy is the complication of diabetic neuropathy in which trauma sets off uncontrolled inflammation, pathological bone destruction, and this can ultimately lead to the hallmark rock and bottom shelf of a deformity. It is more common than previously thought, and a recent study noted that among people with type 2 diabetes, vibration perception threshold greater than 25 volts and aged over 50, there was evidence of clinical and radiological features sharp for foot in almost 10% of them. In addition to type 2 diabetes, the complication affects people with type 1 diabetes at a very early age. And here is an example of one of our youngest patients presenting with an active shark of foot at the age of 21. You can see the pathological damage of the forefoot and midfoot in the extensive inflammation on magnetic resonance imaging. Also, some patients with type 1 diabetes may have predominantly small fiber neuropathy and exhibit preserved large fiber function. Here is a lady who attended the clinic after trauma. She noted pain and swelling of her left foot. She had normal monofilament tests and vibration perception threshold at 15 volts. She also had a bruise in the midfoot on the plantar side, and the onset of Charcot osteoarthropathy was confirmed. A CT scan showed a subchondral fracture at the base of the first metatarsal and also at the base of the second metatarsal. It is extremely important to recognize the natural history of the Charcot foot and the classical presentation of a hot swollen foot in diabetes with pathological fracture, fragmentation, subluxation, and if not recognized and managed timely, this can progress to extensive bone and joint destruction with severe deformity. The natural course of the disease has been described by Eichenholz, who noted the clinical and radiological features of the charcoal foot as it presents and undergoes through the stages of development, coalescence, reconstruction, and reconstitution. At present, casting therapy is the mainstay of charcoal foot management, and this can be carried out with the non-removable total contact cast, which are applied by the podiatrist in our clinic or below knee of the shelf devices. The aim of casting therapy is to offload the foot, reduce mechanical forces, edema, inflammation, redistribute plantar pressure, and also limit bone and joint destruction, and thus arrest the progression of deformity. Casting therapy can be applied for any anatomical pattern of involvement of the charcoal process, as described in the Sanders and Frickberg classification. And in the next slides, I will show examples of classical pattern one involvement, metatarsal phalangeal jo joints and metatarsals, pattern two, tarsal metatarsal joints, pattern three, tarsal joints, pattern four involves the ankle, and pattern five is a cochineal fracture. It is extremely important to make the early diagnosis when there is limited radiological damage. And here is an example of a patient who attended the clinic after trauma, the foot was swollen, and there was an indication of midfoot injury, which was confirmed on magnetic resonance imaging, subchondral intraarticular fracture of the second metatarsal associated with inflammation and edema in the, in the midfoot. It is extremely important to recognize the natural history, and recently there has been a recognition of a pre-radiological stage of the so-called stage zero charcoal foot, which again presents as a hot inflamed foot, but x-rays is usually normal. This has been further proposed into the modified classification in which in addition to the classical three icon hole stages, there is the further stage, stage zero, which is uh, notified by mild inflammation, edema, x-ray is normal, 
but there is, abnorm there is abnormality on magnetic resonance imaging, including microfracture, bone marrow edema, and bone bruising. And this stage zero precedes stage one, well recognized by its severe inflammation, soft tissue edema, and macrofractures, which can be noted both on X-ray and magnetic resonance imaging. Recognition of this stage has also led to improved management of the charcoal foot uh, and a cohort of 71 cases. Those who presented at stage zero, 70% healed without deformity in contrast to those who presented at stage one, only 7% of whom healed without deformity. And I would like to illustrate this with an example from our practice a patient presenting with a normal x-ray, a clinically suspected charcoal foot. He had a fracture of the medial cuneiform associated with inflammation on magnetic resonance imaging. Casting therapy was instituted and this led to resolution of edema, healing of fracture, and uh, also x-ray on follow-up did not show any progression. It remained normal and furthermore, this patient did not develop deformity. And to summarize, ladies and gentlemen, it is important to recognize the variable presentation of charcoal foot in diabetes. A high index of suspicion is needed to make the earliest diagnosis. And at present, casting therapy is the mainstay of the non-surgical management of this devastating condition in diabetes. Thank you for your attention.